in this episode I want to talk about the music behind the music in our album Songs and Lovers. The many pop groups and others have used classical themes in their work and um, people like David Bennett on YouTube give many examples of that. I don't think I've come across an album which really makes that idea the centerpiece of all of, or nearly all of, the tracks on the album. But that's certainly the case in ours. Yes, out of the 11 tracks on the album, no less than eight contain and are based on uh, themes from classical composers. Some songs even include more than one classical composer as the theme or the bridge or the chorus or the refrain. So I want to spend a little time now t talking about the, the themes and which songs they come from. So let's start with the first one I wrote, which was called the first one I wrote, which I originally called Marcella, but ended up with the name Without a Heart. And this, I have to make a confession here, um, it was because I may be okay at writing lyrics, but I'm no good at writing tunes. And in desperation, I ch stole, there's no other word for it, plagiarized, maybe that's a better one, uh, themes from classical composers, having spent much of my early uh, youth listening to classical music from Hammersmith Public Library, which happened to be on the my way home from school, so I could pop into the library, get the latest thing I wanted to listen to on LP in those days, and even before that on 78s, <laughs> gosh, it's so long ago, um, to, um, to listen to on my, in my room. So that's where I got my influences, and that's my weakness in writing tunes led to the idea, the concept of using classical music to write or to back modern lyrics such as those I've written on this album. Anyway, the first one, Without a Heart, was originally called Marcella because it came from the Adagio by Marcello, uh, Alessandro Marcello, uh, and uh, from his oboe concerto in D minor, sometimes C minor. And that's quite a well-known piece of music, but those people who know it will recognize the introduction as being his introduction, not mine. Then the second part of that uh, song comes from Sir Edward Elgar, who wrote a wonderful oratorio, The Dream of Gerontius. And in it, there is a well-known hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. Um, and we all sang it at school. I mean, praise to the holiest in the height and in the depths be praise. But Elgar used a variation on that song, on that tune, and uh, that's what I used in Without a Heart. I know we'll never ever fall in love the way we were. Praise to the holiest in the height and in the depths be praise. In all his works, most wonderful, most sure in all his ways. Lovely piece of music, and I couldn't resist borrowing it for my song. And that's how Without a Heart came to be. Jimbo is a song about my son. The themes from classical music used in it are, first of all, the uh, well-known P 
piano concerto by Mozart number 21, sometimes called the Elvira Madigan concerto because it was used in a film of that name uh, too, in fact. Uh, films of Elvira Madigan were made, uh, one in 43 and the other in 1967. And it's the story of um, some, a, a young girl who became very successful but was persuaded to run away from the circus where she worked as a, a tightrope walker to uh, run away with a, a young bankrupt uh, lover who unfortunately then when he'd reached the end of his bankruptcy shot her dead and himself as well. So it's a it's a tragic story, and the 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 song, the the tune by Mozart is also quite funeral in its quality, and I've chosen that because my son also was very successful and also sadly died prematurely at age forty eight, and he was very well thought of by his estate agency Savills who uh, organised a m memorial service for him at St Martin's in the Field in London, itself the scene of many a fine concert. And the second theme um, is Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony No. 6, uh, a favourite of mine and one of the first uh, classical pieces of music I ever heard, so I thought it might be appropriate. And the sadness of the incident is underlined because although my son was very successful I hardly ever saw him, uh, never saw his marriage, never saw him being born simply because I was told he wasn't going to be born till the morning and uh, of course never saw his dying when he died of lung cancer uh, prematurely. So that's the story of Jimbo and um, I think it's uh, quite poignant in a way. Don't Tell All Our Friends is uh, about a, a girl who has perforce to live with an elderly man and doesn't want him to uh, announce to anyone of his friends, or hers for that matter, that they are a couple. Um, the songs from which it comes uh, are first from Rachmaninoff's um, variations on the theme of Paganini, uh, that's Opus 18 from, sorry, uh, that's Variation 18 from Opus 43. And the second part of that song comes from that wonderful pastoral overture by Vaughan Williams to The Wasps, um, a Greek play by Aristophanes, a Greek comedy. And since I did a degree in classics, it's particularly warm to my heart for two reasons. First, for that, it was first performed in Trinity College, Cambridge, in uh, 1909. And secondly, because the melody is so English and conveys that wonderful feeling of the countryside of England. So I, it endeared me to that tune and I used it in the song. I also used a, a Rachmaninoff theme in Age Gap Love, the title of the song, um, and this time an earlier work by Rachmaninoff, Opus 17, uh, which is the uh, piano concerto in C minor, uh, the second piano concerto in C minor. Remember the first one, uh, he got a bad press and t t took some courage to write another one. But the second one was a wonderful success. Uh, added to by Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto, D major, uh, Opus 35, and that's the first movement of that. Wonderfully uplifting song, I think, of tune. Um, and you might notice that quite a lot of the themes I've borrowed from 
other composers are violin concertos. Um, to be honest, that's because my dad uh, always wanted to be a professional violinist, but was told by his own father, my granddad, that he would never earn a living that way and he should learn a trade. So he became a carpenter, but underneath it I think he was always a little sad that he couldn't follow his dream. And I remember he used to come home uh, from work in the evenings and pick up the violin and play uh, uh, from music by sight. I was always amazed by that, how he could do it. In fact, another of the um, uh, tunes uh, here is, uh, uses Galatsunov's Violin Concerto, third movement. And I remember once showing him the sheet music and said, could he play it? And he picked it up, put it on the stand and played it straight off. And I thought, my goodness, what a talent. But uh, it was never to be fulfilled. Anyway, that's the uh, source of the two themes used in Age Gap Love. And that, of course, is the usual story of the world and social etiquette not uh, acquiescing to relationships between two people of very different ages. I don't know why there are some very successful such relations, but it's always something that causes a bit of a tut-tut in social circles, and that's why I uh, wrote this song. <laughs>